What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? We have an amazing guest, Jacelyn Tantan, who is going to showcase to us and really teach us how basic typography can be. And also talk a little bit about how he's created this beautiful masterpiece that you see before us. If you wanna see the entire commentary, all of the live chat, go to down in the first link in the description, check it out there. Otherwise, enjoy the short version and don't forget to comment and like and subscribe. Recently done some work for the likes of Visa, Amazon, I'm a student of typography and there's just so much to learn that, you know, I'm still learning. Just just a, a general screenshots of some of the work that I've done. I love to use a type family that's pretty big. It has text, which you can use as body copy. It has display. It has like condense, regular, bold. And, and the advantage with doing something like that is that you can stick with one family. And as you dive deeper into type, like the one thing you'll learn, like type pairing, gets a little bit complicated. If you use Sal, for example, and you use the display for your header, you use the text for the body copy, then this actually works really well. I did not do this in this example. I used two different types, but just saying like, you know, it is an advantage of using a big family. Again, this is one of my favorite sans serif typeface. I use it all the time. What I will do is give you guys a couple tools that I use, font and use and type wolf. I like fun and use because it's always great to look at what other people have done with, with certain typeface. So I'll go to fun and use and, and, and see it in action. Like I get to see it in print, I get to see it in web, I get to see it in packaging. Enter, for example, is one of those typefaces that I'm like, whoa, this type looks amazing. So I'll go to fun and use and then I'll click on enter and find like any piece of inspiration that I felt like, wow, that's a great use of this type. So I'll create a mood board with just enter in it and then just snapshot of where it's been used and how it's been used. Same thing with Type Wolf. I, I, I do the same thing, especially when I'm doing more digital stuff. I look for that typeface and see it in action in other people's website and see how they've used it. This is an example of what that mood board, I didn't actually create this one. It's just so much attention that went into it that it looked artistic as opposed to chaotic. Just collect inspiration. When I start a project, I try to avoid like looking for inspiration in the same medium that I'm designing in. If I'm doing a website, I probably spend half of my time looking into print stuff before I dive into looking at other websites. The reason why you're able to keep typography to something on a simpler level that rather than complicated is because we know when something looks good. You're going through and creating mood boards for yourself and being, I like this, I like that, let me try this. You can still get to a high level keeping things basic. What I used to do a lot of, take something from somebody you, you love and take it into whatever tool you use, whether it's XD, Photoshop, Illustrator, and, and try to replicate it. There's always look better than mine. And, it, and what it really is, is the small little details, the little kerning here, because those are the things that take it from good to great. This is a project we're going to be working on. So a little bit of background. So I was in the process of moving out, trying to get a new house. I had this idea of like creating a website that sells furniture, but not just regular furniture, but they more like pieces of art. I'm but you start way. making that branded money, going like no you can afford this what? type of furniture. I'm just going to create a new board. Before you actually start to put your pieces together, like, you know, thinking of your layout and your typeface, like, you know, get some copy, just enough to have some context around mm -hmm. what you're doing. If you design without context, you're decorating, you're not designing. So, you know, just open a couple of screenshots. And then when I saw this one, I was like, man, this is amazing. But this, this was the screen that got me, right? You look at this poster, there's nothing in there. But the reason this looks amazing is the kerning, the letting, the spacing of, of these little things, right? And what I do, I take a screenshot. I paste it here. Cool. One screenshot down. But you know, so like say like I collected a few of those things, right? Just to kind of start having a sense of what I want to do. Type wolf. I just type type wolf and then the name of what I'm looking for. And then I got to the page that I need to. There we go. This typeface looks really nice when it's big. It's not meant to be small. It's not meant to be a body copy. It meant to be headline. How do you know that I shouldn't do 200 pixels? <laughs> Is it the same rule of, I looked at other sites, inspected to see what their pixel size was, and I used that in in my current projects, or what? what is it? It really comes down to context. Having a sense of what your layout is going to be, because that really comes down to that too, because yes, I could have easily gotten 300 pixels plus, but then it wouldn't fit within this layout. Because again, having the context of, I'm trying to sell a product, and mm. the most important thing when you're selling a product is you gotta show people the photo. And then two, you gotta put the product name and you gotta put a description because no one's gonna scroll down. Well, if this was like four lines where it looks as good, 
No, if you're not comfortable with doing your own pipe scales, this is great. What you do, you come in here, you decide on what your base size is going to be. And let's say for me, like, you know, I want it to be 18 or, or, or 22, whatever it's going to be. And then you pick major third is it's, it's safe. Honestly, like, you know, if you want to be like golden ratio and all those things, I just go with major third. That's just my preference. And this gives you a sense of what your H1 should be, what your H2 should be. And again, they just guide. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stick to it like it's the gospel, but when you're just starting, this helps you, like you know, create that hierarchy. And and a lot of the what chatter... we do is <laughs> go ahead, Brandon. There's actually a plugin from TypeScale, that company in Adobe XD, which I did not know. It's over. It's over. Yep. <laughs> Mind blown. And the one thing I want to show you guys with, with these types, right? Like when to do lowercase and when to do uppercase. And I'm gonna show you how that changed both. Are the exact same size. The only difference is one is all uppercase and one is all lowercase. And which one of those screams luxurious and expensive, sophisticated to you? The uppercase one or the lowercase one? The first one. Right? And the reason why is because this type has like this very thin, like like little tail. I'm sure there's a proper name for it. Over here that really makes it stand out, that really give it that wow, like, you know, this type is beautiful look. But when you go all uppercase, the problem is like they all become and they sent this, you lose that because there's no differentiation between like each letters anymore because they all look very blocky. So you lose yeah. that that slickness to it. You look that expensiveness to it, which of course there's time for this, for what we do. And again, that's why context matters. But for what we're doing, we want to have that sleekness, that that expensive look, feel to it. It's not just about like you know, great typeface. If your spacing is not right, then this also lose that sleekness. Um, take advantage of your white space. Take advantage of knowing like you know, you don't pay for the space, use it. Let the type breathe because the one thing with a with a type that's this detail and that's this pretty, if I may say so myself, is that it needs room to stand out. So don't put everything else so close to it that you can no longer appreciate the beauty of it. You look at these two pieces and it's the same type. The only yeah. thing I did is to change the spacing. You think of like furniture in your house, you don't put them all next to each other. You space them out. Like, you know, this, this, everything you do should, you should have a reason for it. And at the end of the day, you should, your reason could just easily be like, well, it looks better this way. Trust yeah. me. I mean, when you sell it to the client, maybe do a little bit more than just it looks better this way. But sometimes that's all, that's all good too, because it does look better this way. Don't design around your photos, but rather create your layouts and everything and get your photo to fit within what you're doing, but not the other way around. This typeface is meant to be used as body copy. And, and the reason why it's great is because, well, when you zoom in, it's a beautiful type and it has its own personality. And, and that's another thing too, to, do, to also do like you know when you look at a typeface you can give it a personality and it, it sounds a little wacky but seriously like when i look at this i'm like this typeface seems expensive it seems somebody that has money it's 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 sophisticated it's a better pretentious typeface but which you know which fits perfectly with what we're doing over here the goal of this is for this to be legible and just be there but not necessarily grabbing the attention but they pairs really well together because this has all this extra detail where this is just like it's not boring but it really helped this one stands out jason that was excellent can't say it any better ladies and gentlemen jason tantan thank you so much follow him on his channels down below and we'll see you next time